The Ministry of Health has outlined 10 components that are required for patient education. So first is harm reduction. So this includes using safe needles, using with a friend, using a test dose, everything that we talked about earlier in their presentation. Second, we must train patients in how to recognize an opioid overdose. Some key findings are similar with how Jake presented initially. So blue lips, not responding, not breathing, pinpoint pupils, and a blood pressure that might not be obtainable. Number three, patients must call 911. This is very important, as after naloxone is given, it wears off very quickly and the patient might go back into respiratory depression and subsequently die. Fourth, patients must be instructed on how to do proper chest compressions so that if the patient's heart does stop, they can provide support to circulate the blood throughout the body until 911 arrives. Fifth, patients must be educated that they can provide rescue breathing to patients if they have been previously trained in how to do this effectively through another program. Sixth, they must be taught how to administer naloxone, so when they should administer it and how they should administer it. Seventh, they need to stay with the patient until 911 arrives, so put the patient in recovery position and not leave them. Eighth, patients should be educated on what to expect when a patient wakes up from after their opioid overdose after they receive naloxone, as they may present with significant opioid withdrawal symptoms, such as the ones mentioned earlier. Ninth, patients must be educated that naloxone is only effective for an opioid overdose and would not be effective for other respiratory depressants like alcohol or benzodiazepines. In addition, it would not be appropriate to give somebody naloxone who has a stimulant overdose. So for example, from crystal methamphetamine or cocaine, those patients present the complete opposite way as patients with opioid overdose. They're usually quite agitated and sweaty and have a very high heart rate and are breathing very quickly. Naloxone would not be indicated in those patients. And finally, patients need to be educated. There is a risk of secondary overdose. And this is, again, relating back to why they need to call 911 and stay with the patient. The patient is at risk for overdose once that naloxone wears off. So that's a lot to cover. I'm sure you're thinking, how are we going to teach our patients or our clients all these things in a very short period of time in the pharmacy? So you don't have to come up with these training materials on your own. Ontario will be coming up with some very shortly. I know the Ontario Pharmacy Association is working on the training materials. What we have right now to guide us is the training materials that have been used by Toronto Public Health. So this is an example of the card and poster that Toronto Public Health has been using for several years. And there is a slight modification to this and I'll let you know as we go through each step. So first, they recommend that we shake and shout patients at the shoulder, shake patients at the shoulders and shout their name. So you want to see if the patient is responding. If the patient is not responding, 911 should be called immediately. Three, the loxone should be injected into the arm or leg muscle. The loxone right now is available in vials and ampules. So if it is an ampule, the top should be broken off. Often there is a safety top on the ampule and the loxone will be, should be drawn up into the syringe and then injected intramuscularly. If it is a vial, the plastic cap must be flicked off and then the naloxone can be drawn up quite easily. The entire dose of the vial or ampule should be drawn up and then injected. Fourth, Toronto Public Health recommends doing chest compressions. Again, as I mentioned this before, it is really hard to determine when somebody is not breathing well or gasping whether or not their heart is pumping. So chest compressions are essential in case they have had a cardiac arrest. Data does show that chest compressions are not going to harm patients if their heart is pumping and again can act as a form of deep stimulation and wake them up. Toronto Public Health has modified this step and they have also added in uh, rescue breathing if, if the bystander is appropriately trained in how to provide rescue breathing. It is an optional step as we do know from studies that it is very difficult to teach and to learn how to give proper rescue breathings. So they focus here on chest compressions. Finally, step five, you have to reassess the patient, see if the naloxone is working, see if the chest compressions are working, and if they are not and there's been no improvement, you can provide a, a second dose of naloxone at 0.4 milligrams into the arm or leg muscle. After the second dose is complete, they recommend continuing with chest compressions until EMS arrives. 
Toronto Public Health has also produced this document outlining the signs of opioid overdose and recovery position. So they put some information here that helps remind patients what opioids are. So opioids include Oxycontin, Oxyneo, Fentanyl, Heroin, Percocet, Dilaudid, Codeine, Morphine, and Methadone. And again, Naloxone only works for opioids. They've outlined the signs of opioid overdose. So can't wake the person up. The breathing is very slow, erratic, or stopped. There's deep snoring or gurgling sound. The fingernails or lips are blue or purple. Body is very limp and the pupils are very small. They then recommend the recovery position. So they've recommended putting the patient in the recovery position if they are unconscious and breathing or if they have to leave the patient unattended. These documents are available free of charge on the Toronto Public Health website. So in summary, death from opioid overdose is a public health emergency. People are dying and we need to intervene. Signs of opioid overdose are easy to recognize and include respiratory depression and decreased level of consciousness. To respond to an opioid overdose, 911 should immediately be called, naloxone should be administered, rescue breathing should be given if a patient is adequately trained, and chest compression should be initiated. Take home naloxone can save lives and they will save lives. Resources are available for you to train your patients through the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care and on the OPA website. Dr. Michelle Clayman's office, August the 24th, 2016, in a reception area. Chest compressions only. Naloxone has no role in the management of cardiac arrest. Respiratory assist is essential. It's even more vital than the actual naloxone. Polydrug overdose, uh, an overdose mimic, respiratory assist, 